walking the door. Brian Cooper, president for the um, Houston Roughnecks. Ladies and gentlemen, give it up. You got you got the um, the, uh, the 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 uh, hand claps. Come on, what where you at? There we go, Jerry. How's it going, Brian? Not too bad, guys. How you doing? How you, How you doing? doing? Hey, man, kick off, oh. man. Kick Hold off, on, my is, uh, man. Just oh, around, my God. around the corner, man. February eighth. Uh, How quick this, did this date come? Oh, it, it it's you know it, it's funny. It's halfway. You know, you're, it's it's coming quick, but I'm also excited as well. So I feel like you know it's it's I can't wait for it to get here. So it's a. Uh, uh, it seems like it's it's been moving real fast, but at the same time, nine days from moving now we're gonna fast. kick this thing off. Yeah, so. moving real fast, as in the um, the moniker uh, uh, less stall and, and more ball. ball. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Tell it's me who, who came up with the uh, the slogan. That's the commission, yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, Oliver Luck. Yeah. yeah, he came up with that. Uh, gave up that slogan. I love it. I mean, I, you know, I was talking about it this morning with folks. Yeah. I said, you know, it's exactly it. We're gonna go have a good fast game, and I think the fans gonna love it. Yeah, uh, June Jones, uh, famous uh, for the run and shoot offense. Uh, we know all about June Jones. Uh, he, he's he's one of those legendary figures. Um, almost kind of like Dusty Baker. We got Dusty Baker. We did uh, get here. Dusty Baker. I mean, Baker. big ups, yeah. big ups, yeah. big ups. We got Dusty yeah. Baker uh, here. So so uh, uh, talk to me about um, you know how excited are we uh, to have June Jones? Oh, you know, it's, it's it's incredible. I mean, June is you know that he started the run and shoot offense with Marcus yeah. Davis here with the Gamblers. You know, I think a lot of people don't realize that he's one of the few coaches to have coached two Hall of Fame quarterbacks in both Jim Kelly and in uh, Warren Moon. And so we're going to score points. Yeah, right? yeah. So that's going to be, we're going to, I think fans are going to come out there next Saturday. And you're going to see, we're going to be lighting up that Man, score. Man, I was so mad when uh, Warren Moon left the city. Uh, I, 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 I cried. I, I cried that day. I don't. I think. I don't. I don't think we uh, won another playoff game. <laughs> after one, after one. I wonder why. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, but uh, the stadium. Uh, let's talk. To, talk to me about the stadium. What the fans got got to look forward to um, coming out to TDCU. Oh, uh, we're gonna have a whole lot of good stuff out there. You know, uh, we're really trying to enhance that fan experience and just you know we want to make sure the fans come out, have a great customer service. Yeah. We're gonna do all the. The, the, the little things, right? That's one. Of, that's a big thing for me. I want to make sure when you come in there, you know, that all the things that, that you expect, uh, you'll have. And so well, we're going to have a tailgate. we got an official tailgate yeah. light out. You look, you can't uh -huh. have football in Texas without that's tailgate. Right. Uh -huh. So that's happening. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's going to be in our blue lots. We're going to have... Uh, we're gonna have a, a a tailgate plaza out there also with maybe some food trucks and some and uh, and a beer garden out there to start off. We got a kid zone in place as well. Yeah. We got you know uh, we got what we're calling the tough shed uh, plaza where we're gonna have a, a tough shed that looks like our looks like with our logo out and we're gonna have merch in there and it's where fans can gather. We might have some radio folks out yeah, there as yeah. well and so it's gonna be exciting. Yeah, Brad, this is no, the no, new no, home now. Brad yeah. and I we, we were just talking last night <laughs> because um, I just got home last night um, from Miami, and I'm going to tell you, it's crazy down there. The know, guys hey. getting ready for the Super Bowl this weekend. <laughs> I, I can't wait, actually. It's going to be a great game. Um, but 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 it's parties galore going on. I yeah. mean, we're getting ready to kick off, you know, um, the inaugural season of the XFL. Um, where are the parties, man? Well, we got, you know, like, we're, we're, working to, we're working to have that party on Saturday night and Saturday afternoon. But but we are going to look. We're going to have a fan party on at uh, Pitch Twenty Five at six o'clock on uh, Thursday night. Yeah. So you definitely got to come. You both invited. Okay. All right. Yeah, uh, we got to be there. We were just and, talking about that. You know, the Fox, uh, our Fox national team, Kurt Menefee, Joel Clatt going to be there. Our broadcast team with Nate and John going to be there. Yeah. ESPN nine seven five zone. Yeah. So it's going to be. It's going to. Coaches and teams going to be there. It's going to be a lot of fun. So now, now I, I, I'm excited for all of this. I'm excited for the parties. I'm excited for the merch. <laughs> I'm excited for it all. But but what, how do we feel about the players? How do we feel about the team? Is the team well constructed? Do, do we think that we can go out and go all the way this year? Or? I, I I think you know like I'll, I'll obviously be subjective, right? <laughs> I hope but, that you would be. I, but but I think you know I think our team is real strong. Well, I, I mean I, I know that we be, I think we're going to be I think we're going to be a force to be reckoned with in the league, and I think. We got, you know, we got a pair of great quarterbacks in PJ and Connor. Um, we got Andre Williams, uh, you know, Heisman finalist back there in the backfield. We got Sammy Coates uh, out there, you know, at wide receiver. We got Coney Ely on the other side and Gabe Wright. And I mean, we just got, we got some, we got some good, we got now, some good guys. Jerry Bo and I were talking last week. Um, we did read Chad Ochocinco came and tried out for the team. I, he I, tried out for the kicker position. Wow, what what uh, kicker? I, I, I don't, uh, I, I don't think that. Was, I think that uh, was a. Uh, False, <laughs> false rumor. <laughs> okay, okay. What? What? I, uh, I do not believe that. <laughs> what? What are the teams though? I mean, out there. I mean, out of the eight teams that we know, are there any ones that you see like off the gate? Like, mm, this might be one that we're gonna have to see again down the road. I, you know, I think all of them are gonna be tough. 
I think they all showed something at training camp. I think they all got some great – all of them have great players. You know, you look, you got da- – look, rival Dallas. You know, Dallas is always going to – we got to get up for Dallas. Def- right? yeah, Dallas def- is going to be the big game. They got Coach Stoops up there. They're putting some stuff, some special together up there with what they're doing. St. Louis is going to be good. L.A. is our opener, right? You know, Coach Moss is going to have those guys ready. Um, you know, Tampa's going to be tough. I, I always say I got a little soft spot for Tampa because they're the Vipers. I used to be Vipers president with the G League. So, um, you know, New York's going to be tough with Coach Gilbride up there in D.C. Wow. with Cardell Jones. And, you know, I mean, they got, you know, they're going to be tough as well. I think everybody in Seattle, too. I mean, they're all going to be, you know, they've all got their strengths. I think it's just, it's going to be, it's going to be a lot of good football players. You know, I was around for the um, first F- XFL. And um, now this time around, I, it seems so different. It actually seems so different. How big is it being a part of the Fox family and making this thing what it really is, and how big it really can get? Oh, I think it's incredible. And, and, and Fox and ABC. I don't, I won't leave ABC. Yeah. Oh, yeah, give, give a love definitely. out to ABC. Yeah. Yes, but I think can. TV is huge for us. We haven't had, we haven't seen a TV footprint this big since the USFL. Definitely. And I think that definitely. that's what is really going to be. I think that's what's going. to We're on uh, our ten games. Eight of our ten games are on broadcast television. We got two on FS1. But eight of them are on broadcast Fox or broadcast ABC, and that's just you know that's amazing. It's monster. Yeah, it, it really that's is. Amazing. I mean, I mean, the world actually going to get a chance to see football pretty much year round, and actually, uh, and, and for me, it's like I'm um, watching wrestling. I like watching this brand. I like watching this brand just because I love the game. We got so many fans out there that just love the game. Those fantasy footballers now they're going to get a chance to be a part of something totally different. Yep. Yeah, and 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 when you talk about totally different, y'all have changed some rules. Some big. I yeah. listened to Commissioner Luck talk about it. Um, yeah. You know, there's the one, three, one, two, and three I extra that. points. The I mean, so talk about talk about that. So oh, what, the exciting. one is from the five, right? No, no one. So one point's from the two. From the two. two is from the five. Three is from the ten. And I mean, it doesn't get more exciting than that, right? You could be down nine. You know, you're down by nine. Uh, generally, that's a two score. Now all of a sudden, you're trying to tie the game. I think that's going to be amazing to see that see that in action. So. And and the way the tiebreakers are. Explain oh. that. So yeah, so you've got so your overtime is just incredible. I think it's a it's a mix, right? It's a mix between um, what you see sort of in college, where everybody gets an equal shot at getting at getting in. But then you got a little bit of soccer and hockey thrown in there with that, you know, kind of that, that 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 one shot to get the points. So what you've got is both your starting offense and your starting defense out there on the five yard line, and they got one, you know, if they get one shot to throw into the end zone, that's and that, and that gets you a point. And then the and then the um, it both teams take you know at least they get they take it they get five opportunities for that and the first one to get the five wins and then if they tie then they then it goes into sudden death it's I think the fans are going to be look uh, are going to be super excited about that uh, hopefully we're not going in overtime all the time yeah we're well we don't the, the rough next <laughs> never in overtime exactly right we don't you know, need to worry about we'll it but all the other teams send them home happy right? yeah but yeah exactly it'll be nice to watch on TV but yeah the yeah, we're gonna send our fans home happy in the before at, at the end of regulation. And what is gonna be the equivalent? You know, because the Roughnecks are obviously gonna go all the way. What's the equivalent to the Super Bowl? I mean, what the, what's the way that that structure is gonna work? Yeah, so, as well as what we're gonna have the game actually when you know yeah. when we get there. So so they're still still figuring. You know, the the uh, the, the location is still still being. Up, but we're in the mix. But this location still hasn't been set. But the but for the tournament, it will be your – so we, we're, our divisions were, were divided but east and west. Yes. So we're in the western, so it's, it's us, Seattle, L.A., and Dallas, and then St. Louis, uh, New York, D.C., and Tampa are in the east. So it will be the east champion versus the east runner-up, west champion versus west runner-up. So if we win the west, which we will. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> we'll host that first playoff game there, uh, and then uh, the following week they'll play that XFL championship game. Man. Back in the day, it was the million dollar game, right? <laughs> yeah, that was the yeah, first XFL. Yeah, yeah, I remember that. Yeah, I remember yeah. that. Well, I think that it's just cool because you talk about like the gamblers, and and really, I mean, I wasn't really around for too much of it, but I I, I talked to people who were around for the gamblers, and they were like, "Man, y'all don't you don't understand? Oh. We were rooting for the gamblers more than we were any other sports team at oh, one time." Man, I mean, they, yeah. they, you know, June was selling. They put you know they put thirty five thousand in the yeah, Astrodome. Yeah, I mean, and you yeah. had Jim Kelly, yeah, you man. know, and Anthony Carter. Yes, I, mean, I mean, you had some. I mean, you had, it's, you know they did. They now, did some I tell you, I tell you, I was I was here uh, for for that um that that time and um the city was lit up, man. I mean the gamblers were on fire. I mean we literally were on a roll. I mean 
to get the uh, rug pulled out from under us like that, man. We, were, <laughs> we was like, whoa, hold them up, man. We about to get a championship here in Houston. <laughs> you know, what are you doing? You know, so heck yeah, man. Uh, uh, tickets right now. Tickets on sale. And, tickets on sale. We, you know, and hey, we are we, we're loving it, man. Right now, that, that we are ready to rock on uh, on Saturday, and the tickets are going. We we uh, ticket sales been real strong, and uh, yeah, tickets are. Twenty dollars and twenty dollars, uh, twenty four dollars for single game. But if you get your season tickets, only twenty. And I mean, look, twenty four dollars to get in the building to yeah, see a great yeah. football game. Yeah. You can't beat that. Nah, you can't nah, beat that. I mean, I mean, I, I, everybody, you know, everybody, come out. I'm talking about mom, grandma, grandpa, <laughs> yeah. the kid. Everybody. <laughs> Everyone can come out for that price. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you will, yeah, you're gonna see. Look, and, and look, we two guys that uh, fought back in the day, 1982, 1982, actually. Um, <laughs> Jerry Cooney. Yes, yeah. F- friend of the show. Friend of the show, and Larry Holmes. Right. They want to run it back. That's the story. The story is Larry, in 2020. Yes, in 2020, Larry Holmes is looking to get back into the ring with Jerry Cooney. It's going to be for charity, but it's going to be a fight. Uh, combined age, 133 <laughs> years. <laughs> No, no, no. It was a movie, actually, back in the day. Kind of like was a remake of this fight. I, I don't know if you remember. This, this fight had a whole lot of hype behind it because Jerry Cooney, back in the day, like yourself, the great white hope. That's right. <laughs> and, and the movie was called The Great, the great white, white Hype. hope. Yeah, hype. Yeah. Great White Hype. Damon Wayne was in, in the movie. And uh, it was it was it was toxic, man. It was toxic at that time, man. I, I was 17 years old, and I was like, man, I, I was loving it because no one knew what was gonna happen. Jerry Cooney, literally, one of the top heavyweights that ever, you know, put on a pair of boxing gloves. I mean, Jerry Cooney was a bad boy. If Muhammad Ali, George Foreman, um, um, um <laughs> Ken Norton, and about 10 other guys was not there. Jerry Cooney would have been the heavyweight, heavyweight champion, champion of the world. <laughs> that's a little. That's a little bit crazy, though. A hundred and what? You say hundred and what? Thirty-three years. Yeah. So, uh, what do you think about? What do you think about these two actually getting into? No, no, no. Wait a minute. I, I, I watched Larry Holmes. I don't know. It might have been twenty years ago. Uh, that's so a long time. It might have been twenty years ago. He was twenty years younger, but it was in Galveston, Texas. It was a young man. Like I, I can't remember his name, but he was like in his twenties, and he was going to be fighting Larry Holmes in the um, Moody Civic Center in Galveston, Texas, and um, he said, "I'm going to go out here and beat up on this old man and just beat up on him and 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 put him in in retirement." And and Larry Holmes proceeded to go out there and beat that young man up so bad, <laughs> it, it, it was it was like a mismatch. It was like this kid shouldn't have never been in the ring with Larry Holmes, the former heavyweight champion of the world, as well as not just the former heavyweight champion of the world. I mean, the brother kept the title, you know, oh. for, for many, 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 right, many, yeah. many, 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 many years. Real boy. Almost a decade. So so what do you guys think? Uh, uh, Brian, 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 talk to me. Brian, I'll let you take it. When you were talking about Larry Holmes, all I could think of was when he jumped off that car roof on the first oh, yeah. Rich, Rich Blood Green, and, and he was talking smack yeah. about Larry yeah. Holmes all of a sudden. <laughs> So I look. I always I, for that reason jump through the I'm, roof. I'm, I'm always gonna put my money on the former champ, Larry Holmes. So, yeah, he, he, it was. It would definitely be a spectacle. Larry Holmes. <laughs> it would be a spectacle. Larry, Larry Holmes is 70 years old. And Jerry Cooney's like what? 63. So so so, tell me, do you think what what do you think that fight would look like? First of all. We, we, like I said, we know Jerry Cooney. We see him walking around. Yeah, we see him all the time. We're going to see him in a couple weeks. We'll see him in a couple weeks. Now, here's my thing. There is There was a movie made about this. You ever seen the movie Grudge Match that came out about 10 oh, yeah, years ago? I, I did with, see that. With Sylvester Stallone yeah, and yeah. Robert De Niro? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what this is. That's what this is. The two old guys getting back in the ring. Yeah. And what was it? It was bad. It was bad. Nobody wanted to see it. This isn't like, and in all due respect to Jerry Cooney and Larry Holmes, but this isn't like Rocky Balboa, right, where you had... Rocky get back in the ring. The Rocky Six, where you had Rocky get back in the ring with Mason the Lion Dixon. This isn't this isn't old versus young, just to see an exhibition style. This is shouldn't be licensed in any of the fifty states. The, 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 where are they doing this fight? I, I don't know yet. That, that hadn't been determined. But, They're gonna do the same place Floyd had fought Nasukawa. It's like the XFL, they haven't determined that yet. But the thing is this: 
the, the thing is this. I think we got a halftime show. <laughs> <It's>, it's, it's, <laughs> this, you might want to stay away no, from that yeah. one. No, this is the question. This is my question. This is my question. Would you want to see Larry Holmes versus Jerry Cooley just for a novelty act? Would you want to see something like that? Would you pay to see it? I, I mean, wouldn't, I mean, Brian. I mean, if, I, if, no, if, if it's I, just, I think if it's if it's for if it's for a good cause and it's a couple rounds, I maybe. I, I mean, but it had to be three uh, one minute rounds. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like you know, it had to be five you know, one minute <laughs> rounds. Maybe. Five, five, one minute I don't know rounds. if they can get that past the commission. <laughs> <laughs> you know, <laughs> that that that'd be rough. That'd be rough. Uh, uh, but, but but I know but 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 not to change the subject too much. But it, you, know, you said you know you, you follow boxing a little bit. I mean, do you know uh, about the upcoming fight Tyson Fury Deontay Wilder? This is you know champion versus champion. You know Deontay maybe the best knockout artist in the game today. What, what do you think about that fight? I mean, I think it's it's gonna be it's a it's a it's one I think people want to see. I'm not you know I to me I think I haven't been following that closely. Right. But I think it's look I know enough to know that that's gonna be it's gonna be a good match. I, you, look, I always want to see. You want to see two guys come out that are that are close in in, in scale, and I think you're going to get that there. Uh, yeah, I agree. Uh, uh, That's uh, a great point. Uh, 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 two teams, uh, yeah, uh, uh, are like Houston and, and Los Angeles, right? Right, right, right. February I mean, the eighth. I, I mean, that, that's what I'm talking about. I mean, we well, talk- I'm hoping we're not that close. To yeah, scale. yeah. I, I think that we're going to be a st- step above, well, but, but you know, but we, but we still, anything can happen. We're still talking about knockouts. Buster sure, Douglas, Buster Douglas won one time. I'm you know what I mean? Anything can happen, but but. And, wait, and Brian, tell a little bit more about like what's your background. You talked about working with the Vipers before. Tell a little bit about your background. A little bit. Um, so I, you know, I started out as a lawyer. You know, don't hold that against me. But I, but uh, I would say <laughs> I like lawyers. Uh, in here. Yeah. Uh, so I spent about twenty years as a lawyer and, and a sports exec. But I started out as a sports lawyer, uh, and I represented you know NBA, NHL, um, Major League Soccer, and then was an agent for a while. And then I also had a, my law practice where I represented just companies as well. And then and then bef- that, after that, I went to the Vipers and then uh, on to Rice University as their uh, senior uh, associate AD. How long are we with the Vipers? Uh, I was at the Vipers uh, just over two and a half years. Uh, we, we, had, we won a championship in 2010. Uh, we were fortunate enough to build a, um, a hybrid arrangement with the, with the Rockets where they came in and, and helped our basketball operations side. And it paid off dividends right out the gate. We got... Uh, Chris Finch was our coach that year. He's now in New Orleans, and uh, we won a championship in 2010, and rest, we went on from there. We've Since then, they've, the Vipers have had three coaches go to the NBA, including Nick Nurse. Yeah, uh, who's now he just in, won the NBA, won the NBA championship. championship and uh, three titles in 10 years, and, you know, they're doing good stuff. So I, I, I'm, I've, I said I'm one for one on championship rings and team presidency, so – I plan to hopefully get that streak, keep that yeah. streak going. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna keep it moving. And then, of course, you know, with the you know NBA and, and being being involved with the Vipers. I mean, obviously Kobe. Everybody took that pretty hard. Yeah. Um, I don't know. Did you ever have any interactions with Kobe, or did you ever get I, a chance to be around him? I didn't. Um, I mean, I you know I go to All Star a couple of years, and but I I didn't I didn't see him and didn't know him. But yeah, it, that I don't. I think even with that, it you know, obviously just it's it's one of those things where it's still just. Even if you didn't, you know, I heard somebody on the radio a couple nights ago say, you know, I hadn't, they hadn't cried for an individual that they didn't know. And I think people, because he had, he touched people in that way that yeah. I think people um, just had that, that reaction about it. Even if they didn't know him, they just had an emotional reaction. I know Sunday I was just, it, it was just, it's like the air just sucked out of me. It was just, you know, cause, and I think it's just because he had such presence in life and he had, you know, his four beautiful daughters and just, it just, I, I don't know. It just, you know, I think as a parent, as a, you know, just, it just, it, it also just, it just, like I said, it just kind of sucked the air out of me. Yeah. You know? um, yeah. I, I tell you, uh, um, Jerry, uh, uh, he, he played a piece uh, that Kobe uh, was talking last night, just uh, motivated. It was always motivated. And um, that, that, I think that's what people going to really, really miss out on. I mean, the basketball career, yeah. everybody know how great it was, you know, but oh, it, yeah. I think what defines you um, at the end of the day, is your your full body of work, and and I really feel like Kobe had so so much more work still yet to be done. Hey guys, um, we got Brian Cooper here with us. Uh, he's just been hanging out with us, uh, president of Houston Roughnecks. I I want to say how much I respect you, man. Um, first and foremost, because I, I look at you, you you a young man, man, and you you <laughs> you've had a lot of success in your in your years, and, and there's so many young men out there that can look at you and say, man, um, that's, 
that's what I want to be like. Um, uh, and, and then how do I get there? And then for someone like yourself to be able to say, this is how you do it. Um, there are no shortcuts. I mean, there are no, um, you know, uh, ways you could just, you know, snap your finger, get which uh, quick schemes. It's not like that. You got to put in the work, man. And uh, yeah, I mean, it's, you know, it's, you know, and I think that that's what's, and everybody can do it. You know, I think that it's, it's, you know, I always tell folks, listen, look, it's, it's never, an, it's, it's always a possibility. And you just got to, you know, I always tell you know, folks, I said, look, map out where you want to be, you know, five to 10 years. That's your roadmap right there. Now figure out those steps to get there and you can do it. You know, you can, you can figure out, okay, I, I, I want to be here in five years. Okay. Well, how do you get there? Well, I got to do this, this, and this. Okay. We'll go attain this. You got to get this. And, and, and I said, that's your roadmap. And I didn't even do it that way, honestly, coming up. I, you know, it's just kind of, you know, things kind of, I was like, oh, well, you know, I like, you know, this is a good skill set. I should do it. But I think if, um, to me, I'm always thinking that that's just the, I, I want to see people, I, I love seeing people, you know, attain what they, you know, attain yeah. that thing. And, and I think everybody's got that capability. And I'm always happy to see when, you know, when people are like, look, you know, I, I tried this and I didn't succeed. I went this route again. I went this route. That's how everybody has to do it. You yeah. know, that's yeah. the, that's the thing. I think it's, you know, we're, we, we've, um, I was at a TD club event yesterday and a Ricardo McDonald was, was speaking and he, and he gave a great speech where, you know, he's talking about, it. he talked about, you know, failure, you know, begets success and that you're going to have to have that. And, yes, and, and I think that that's, I think, that's what makes. I think, that quite frankly, that's what makes the end game the the, the, the more the, the most rewarding is when you you know you you you've worked you hard you struggled you yeah. you've made another route and yeah. I just love seeing yeah. people when when they I, I love hearing stories about that and I love seeing people attain their goals and dreams when they've when they've had that and like you said yeah. it's, it it you know recognizing that you know the the, the fight. And, and, and attaining it is just Definitely. great. Definitely. It's just great. You know, um, uh, life is, man, life is the hardest thing that one is going to deal with in life. And uh, I tell the young people all the time, man, preparation. Preparation is the only luck you're going to ever have. You know what I mean? So prepare yourself for life because uh, it ain't going to get no easy. It's going to get tougher and tougher and tougher. <laughs> Just like them Houston Roughnecks, guys. <laughs> Brian Cooper in the house with us, y'all. I want to appreciate you for stepping in with Thanks. us and uh, talking Thanks, a little sir. boxing. President of the Houston Roughneck, guys, season kicks off February 8th. TDECU Stadium. Get some, want some, sucker. Tickets starts <laughs> at $24. Hey, guys. <laughs>